Good morning and welcome again to Tai Chi Tuesday. You can see I've had a little change around, done a few things, make it look a bit uh, nicer in the background. Um, so today is going to be a follow along from the last couple of weeks. So if you haven't watched the last couple of weeks and you don't know anything about Tai Chi, you might want to watch the last couple of weeks and, and catch up a little bit because it shows you some of the really basic movements. Today we're going to be going more into the beginner's 10 form. So things are going to start, you know, moving on a little bit now. So we're going to start with a little warm up today. Um, and today I think I'll just do a, a little follow along like I do in the classes, which is a mixture of um, some Qigong movements and some Tai Chi movements in the form of Qigong movements um, repeated. Uh, and it helps to, doing it this way just helps to get movements in the mind and practice the breathing as well, because a lot of people in Tai Chi forget to breathe when they're doing the forms. And so this hopefully gets you into the muscle memory of breathing into the belly. Remembering that as you breathe in, the belly goes out as you breathe out, the belly goes in. So we'll start with feet shoulder width apart. And we're going to bend the knees a little bit, sink into the hips. Suspend the head from the ceiling as if by a string. We're going to imagine that there's weights on the elbows, pulling the elbows down. So we can't lift them up because that will tense the shoulders. And then we're just going to really concentrate on that breath into the belly. Slowing the breath down, concentrating only on that breath, breathing in. And breathing out. And the more you concentrate on this breath, the more mindful you become. You can bring yourself into this moment. You can clear the mind a little bit and stop lots of thoughts from going on. And while you're doing this, you can also do a quick body scan. You don't often get a chance to do body scans in the um, classes, really. But it's working either from top to bottom or bottom to top. I prefer working from the feet upwards. Some people prefer working from the head downwards. Um, and it's basically just making sure that all of the muscles are nice and relaxed, nothing is tense and pulled in any direction. Start, so starting with the toes and the feet, just wiggling them and making sure they're nice and relaxed and not clenched. Moving up through the legs, remembering that they're 3D objects, so the round, you can be as tense at the back as you can at the front. So it's not just about relaxing the knees down at the front, it's about relaxing the legs all the way around. Calves, shins, working into the hips, using the breath to help. So each time you breathe in, imagine the air and the oxygen going through to your legs, your hips, your arms, your fingertips. And every time you breathe out, you're pushing away and breathing out all of the toxins and the tents that's in your body. You move up, lower belly, lower back. These are really good areas for people to be quite tense in. And just really feel those muscles relax, especially in the glutes as well as you're standing. Allow the muscles in the glutes to just drop down. And then move up through the back, shoulders. And again, you can sort of wiggle things around, tense them up, relax them again, just to make sure that they are nice and relaxed. Work down the arms. A lot of people are very tense in the lower arms in our classes. So we need to really work on thinking about having these really nice and loose shaking out that, those tense areas at the bottom of the arms. Working into the neck. And this can be quite tense as well, especially if you've had a, 
a long week or a long day when you come into the practice and into the jaw and above the eyes, the top of the head. And this is an area which it can be really difficult to actually even feel the muscles in this area. And you know it's tense and you've got to try and work out how to relax them. And you no sooner relax them and then they feel tense again. And this bit can take quite a lot of work, but it's very nice when you can feel those muscles relax. Same in the glutes, you'll find as you stand, you'll tense them again. You know, just work on keeping those nice and relaxed. And some of you will know I was watching a, um, a Chinese Qigong master on one of my social medias. He's very well respected, very nice. I can't actually remember his name offhand. No. Um, but he was saying about, so when we do our breathing regulation at the beginning of our classes, he was talking about how we should imagine this breath as not just being a breath in, through the nose, out through the nose, or mouth, or however you're breathing. But it's also a breath through the head, through the hands. The air is, you know, you're feeling that oxygen everywhere through, through the whole body, through the legs. And it was a really nice, um, the way that he explained it was a very nice um, way of thinking about breathing and the body and Qigong as a, as a combined thing. Um, so yeah, it's just something to bear in mind as you're doing this exercise in the class. It's just thinking about, you know, breathing from the end. You're using the whole body, not just that mechanism for breathing. So continuing that nice deep breath into the belly. And also when we're doing things with the ball, you know, opening in the chest, holding the moon, anything like that holding a ball, whichever version we're doing. Always imagine this as an actual object. You know, some of you would have seen Dave that I bring to the classes. I shall bring him again. And in, in fact, by the time you see this video, I've probably already taken him back to the lessons. Um, so for those watching who haven't been to my classes, Dave is my, um, he's basically a, a, an exercise ball. Um, and I use him to show the energies in that ball and how everything has an energy that can be moved but can't be taken away. So when you hold the ball, and I'm trying to get people to hold it away from the body, imagining that it's an actual object because if you held it close to the body, it would ping out. Um, perhaps I'll do a video with Dave as well, uh, just for those who aren't in the classes. So again, imagining whenever we're, you know, if we're opening the chest, that this is an actual thing that's expanding. Imagine expanding that thing and still being able to feel it in the hands. And then you're pushing it down. And, and it really changes the way that, especially the Qigong feels when you're doing this beginning exercise. And even into the Tai Chi, if you're imagining this actual object, um, within all of these movements, it can make it really powerful in the mind. And as soon as your mind is powerful, then the body can follow along. So again, just making sure you've still got those nice relaxed bent knees. And we will now go into a nice little, just a little bit of a follow along. So nice deep breath in, just to the shoulders. Don't forget it can look higher on the um, camera, breathing out. Breathing in, and as you lift up, keeping the elbows hanging down and not tensing the shoulders or lifting the shoulders up. Remembering that body scan that we just did, so everything is nice and relaxed. Rising on the breath in, because you're expanding and then contracting on the breath out, sinking down. And maybe even just rolling the chest in just very slightly for the contraction, breathing in and expanding, breathing out and a contraction. And 
and do this to your speed. If your breath is faster, that's fine. Just take your breath the speed that you need to do it. Aim to slow it down. If I'm doing proper breathing exercise, I can get my breath down to three breaths a minute. It's the best I've ever done. I do have a friend who can do one breath a minute, but I'd probably turn blue. from the classes if you can't remember any of the other movements that we do it's fine to just do this one and it is actually very relaxing close your eyes stand in the garden and as I say just remember or, or think about that breath coming in from all directions and going out of all of your body, not just the mechanism for breathing and the nose and the mouth. Opening the chest now, thinking about that actual 3D object and feeling that in the hands as it expands and then contracts, rolling the shoulders in just very slightly. Breathing in. And out. Breathing in and raising, expanding. Breathing out, sinking and contracting. And then we'll add cloud hands away from the body, imagining you need that, you've got that space there, you're holding something, turning from the waist, set the centre, breathing in and expanding, breathing out and contracting. And then let's sink some chi. Breathing in, expanding. Breathing out and contracting. You don't have to take the hands too high if you don't want to, you can just bring them to the shoulders. And push down. Breathing in. If you want to take your hands higher, use the whole body expansion and that's fine as well. 
just imagine this spreading out this object and then you're pushing it back together again. Just take a moment to make sure the body is still nice and relaxed. Okay, so the last couple of weeks we've been working on our follow along forms and we're going to finish that off today and maybe look at some stepping, although I think we're going to run out of time for the stepping, that'll be next week. But we're going to look at the end of the follow along form number two and put the two together that we've learned, the one and the two. And so let's do the part that we've come up to. So we'll just go from number two. We won't include number one at the moment. So imagining that string from the ceiling again. Am I opening with the left foot? Don't forget I'm mirroring you. And commencement. And we're holding a ball with the left hand underneath and we're going to do grasp the bird's tail to your left first. So stepping out just to the corner, heel first, then toe, put the weight on, move from the centre. Remember, as you move that weight forward, it comes from the centre. Pull, then Lou, then the G. Then the roll back and palm push. Arm, oh, sorry. And hold the ball again. Palm. Lou. G, pressing forwards. Rolling it back. Lifting the front toe and arm push. And then from here, we're moving the weight over, moving our center of gravity. And you're doing your kick with heel. You can have your hands at shoulder or you can have them lower, doesn't matter. Swap the hands, step out and move the center of gravity over. Rooster. Don't forget, these balances can be as high or as low as you would like to make them. Just on the other side, I'm going to hold a triangle. Moving across to the other side again, and then kick with heel again. Now, this is where we got to last week. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring that left hand under the ball again. And the last movement, it really is the last movement for this, is Fair Maiden weaves the shuttles. We go from the ball again, away from the body, of course. And the same rules apply as for part of the horse's mane and the beginning of grass the bird's tail. Everything is opposites. And this time it's going to go right up to the head or above the head because you need to be able to see. Don't want it down there, one out there. And this hand is going to sort of just pull back a little bit and push. So moving the weight across again, because it's another stepping movement. Step to the corner, heel then toe. The bottom hand, the left hand goes up and the other hand pushes. Not a massive push, not like that. Just a push so that your spine is still neutral, your feet are still rooted through the floor. And then we're going to just bring that right hand under the ball, drop the left elbow, step back, move the weight across, and then we do fair maiden on the other side. Stepping out, heel then toe, the right hand goes up, 
and the left hand pushes forwards. Now this is quite a complicated movement in terms of coordination for a lot of people and I understand that's fine. So do practice this. Eventually you will, honestly, believe me, you will be able to do your step, bottom up and push at the same time. If you've done martial arts, you'll probably be able to do this movement because it's very much a martial arts movement as well. Used a lot in karate, it's a, a double block. So that is Fair Maiden weaves the shuttles. We can add that on. And at the end of the second one, um, I think when I developed this form, I decided to put a little um, apparent close at the end, which is basically like the rollback in Grasp the Bird's Tail. And the reason that I did that is because it didn't feel quite right coming from here back and just doing the cross hands. Admittedly, I do sometimes miss it out accidentally, but it does make it flow a little bit better to have that apparent close there and then bring that back. In fact, it makes it flow much better. So we're going to do that as well. So let's do the two fair maidens and then I will show you how to do the apparent close. So we'll feet shoulder width apart because we're already halfway through the set of forms. And remember the bottom hand just under the belly, top hand in line with the shoulders. And stepping out, heel then toe. Left up, right pushes forwards. Then the right comes under the ball and we step back to Ruchi, feet shoulder width apart, move the way across. And then Fair Maiden on the other side. Now sometimes, <laughs> I just did it then, so I thought I'd explain this. Sometimes you can just sort of using, again, turning from the waist, you can move that ball back slightly so that you're facing almost the opposite direction. So that when you bring that forward, it's a, a much more powerful and much bigger movement. Um, of course, as a beginner, it's absolutely fine to just do your step, bottom up and push the other one. Um, I, I go into that because I'm used to doing it. Uh, but obviously, you can have your ball, step out, one up, push forwards. When you've been doing Tai Chi for longer, you'll be able to move this ball from the waist and you'll be able to do your stronger, more powerful movements. Anyway, so we've done our second one. And then for our apparent close, we are going to sort of bring the hands almost together into a cross. So if I show you in front of the camera, they come together almost like that and roll back. You lift the front toe the same as you would on the grasp, the bird's tail roll back and do a push. So you end up with your little triangle. So you've done your fair maiden. The hands turn in. You do your roll back and you push. And then you hold that triangle back to 12 and step back with the right foot so that you're back into Wu Chi. Your weight is central. And you'll do your cross hands like we've been doing at the end. Remembering that knees are still bent, so as the hands come down, the body raises up. And then the left foot comes in to close. And that's basically your follow along forms number one and two. Um, and then, so next week, we will start working more on the 10 form. And you've actually now done all of the movements that are in 10 form. I think, yes, you've done all of the movements that are in 10 form. So it's just a case of putting them together, adding the footwork in, that's where it gets more complicated. And um, I, I do look forward to doing that. The good thing about 10 form is this is where you're going to see why I did the follow along forms. The follow along forms facing. I know that not everybody uh, can do the mirrored version, but it does help you see what I'm doing with my hands. When we do, we start going into 10 form, I will be demonstrating the other way around. So I'll be going your way around. So you won't necessarily see my hands. 
So this is where the follow along forms come into their own because you've already learned what to do with your hands. Then you're just gonna have to learn what to do with your feet and put it all together. Then you'll start picking up the whole um, Tai Chi principle of the body working together as one. So hopefully it's all been really helpful. And as you go into next week, you'll start to see that. So let's go from We'll just do number two on its own first, and then we'll do, do the two together. So, string from ceiling still, nice and relaxed. Just being careful on these, on any of these movements that you're not tipping over like this. It's always good to maybe look in, look in a mirror, if you've got a full length mirror, or set your camera up, take a video of yourself, always good. Nice deep breaths, the shoulders are relaxed, breathing into the belly and remembering to breathe. And then opening. Commencement. Holding the ball. Grasp the bird's tail. Remember to breathe because otherwise this movement ends up, or this form ends up rushed. And then grasp the bird's tail the other side. If you can't remember any of these movements, just go back over the last couple of videos. Hold that triangle to 12, step back, move the weight across for your kick with left. Then your rooster. Second rooster. And your next kick. And then, fair maiden, weave to the shuttles. Do the apparent close, make a cross, push the ball. Hold the triangle, back to 12, and cross hands. Raising up. And then close. Okay, so let's have a quick little recap on follow along number one. So you'll do your opening commencement. It's part the horse's mane with no step. Then you have the cloud hands, three. So every time your hands get to the left, you count one. And then you continue as if still doing cloud hands and go into reverse reading arms. And then you do brush knee push. And then you do part the horse's mane with the step to the corner. Cool. So let me know um, in the comments what you've thought so far and um, what you think of my new setup. Because um, I really like this one. I really like that one as well, but I really like this one. And uh, my nice little lights and things. Anyway, let me know what you think. And um, I'll see you next week for Tai Chi Tuesday. We're gonna go through, we're gonna put this to music now and just have a nice relaxing time. We'll do the two forms together.